Hey everyone, guess what? You thought this would be a top 10, but it's a top 20. Hey! Well, it turns out this is a very popular topic. I got over 300 submissions from you, so I thought, okay. Let's celebrate the Dark Souls remaster announcement by showcasing 20 great clips from all the Souls games and the few bonus ones you're watching right now. So for the record and for the future, I don't look at the YouTube private messaging system anymore. You know, the old one. I don't check my PS4 messages. So if you want to contact me, you'd be better off using the normal methods. We have a dedicated email for this top 10 series for submissions and for everything else, use the YouTube comments, Twitter or Discord. All right, we've got a good mixture of invasions today. I selected invasions with a great story behind them, but we've also got some incredible plays to come as well. So let's jump in. First up, we have a funny story. Hey guys, funny story here. It's the guy's name, but it is actually a funny story too. He's invading in the kiln of the first flame and he's discovered an interesting map feature. A perfect location to troll unsuspecting hosts. So you just go to this rectangle block here at the bottom of the stairs. Be careful not to slip off. Turn around as you're falling and you'll land right down here. Um, I put a message there so I could identify it easier, see if anyone else gets to it. And the host comes right down, does a plunging attack, tries to finish me off, but just falls off the edge. Uh, it worked out great. A disgraceful amount of players try and follow him down there, which is pretty shocking, but I guess they're just as curious as we are. Definitely a unique and pretty hilarious way of luring people to their deaths. Faber has sent in some more Millwood Greybow shots. His skill with this bow was first showcased in my top 10 DLC weapons video where I went in depth about why this bow is the best grey bow by far. And everyone really seemed to enjoy these long distance assassinations. So we have a selection here. There's something very satisfying about sniping a player with perfect accuracy without them having any idea of where you are. Absinthe Thor is invading in Dark Souls 2 on the Ironkeep Bridge when he spots a chicken wing in the wild. There's a host wielding the mighty Smelter Hammer, which is objectively the biggest weapon in the game. It's a massive slab of chicken drumstick. It's always a special occasion when these come out, and he just so happens to have one of his own. Then, against all the odds, they get invaded by another random player who also has a Smelter Hammer. And these types of spontaneous moments are golden. You know exactly what's going down here. This kind of fight is like the Dark Souls Marmite test. If you can't enjoy a chaotic strength brawl like this, then you might just be a dex user. I'm just saying. Dr. No Sounds is popping down his sign in the King's Passage in Dark Souls 2, and you might know what that means. Looking Glass Knight is looking for some company. You know the Spear of the Church boss in Dark Souls 3? This is the Dark Souls 2 version of that. You put down your invasion sign anywhere in the castle, and then you get summoned in to smack a host during the boss fight. It wasn't too well known at the time, but it definitely led to some funny stories. 16. It's in the Dark Souls 3 Irithyll dungeon, and we've got ourselves a disaster story. For the host, anyway. Dark Souls is one of those games where going AFK is very risky. You can't pause the game. A lot can happen when you're at your most vulnerable. This player's left the game to go and do whatever, and he's left his character curled up in a ball hidden in the corner. But not hidden well enough. First of all, of course, we have the crippling acid surge attacks, the pyromancy that breaks all of your opponent's armor and weapons. There's no feeling quite like going to make a sandwich and then coming back to your game to find all your weapons and armor are now useless. But the fun isn't ending there. He chucks a firebomb at the wall to knock him out of the corner and then the shield pushing begins. all the way to the cliff edge, down the stairs to the very end, which took ages, 
and then he had to wait for the host to return, which took even longer. But I think in the end, it was worth it. Fifteen, X3M is invading in the Ring City and is immediately challenged by two golden warriors of sunlight. Luckily he's teched his build very well for this location and he's in tune with the force. This is one of those where you just sit back and enjoy the show. Cosmaster is invading in the Spear of the Church Covenant, he's protecting the church from trespassers but he's a little bit outnumbered. A whopping 4 players have broken in, including 2 Sunbros, a White Summon and the host himself. Similarly to the earlier Looking Glass Knight submission, Tosmaster has to defeat the host and his team, although the 2 Warriors of Sunlight have already fallen so this is looking promising. It's funny because it very quickly becomes even more promising. The funniest part of the scenario for me is the incredible turnaround. From what looked like such an unwinnable start, we now have a 2v1 where the white summon is so bad that the invader doesn't even have the heart to attack him. He literally ignores him and starts targeting down the host, who's putting up a braver defence. Moronic Being lives up to his name. The slow execution of this poor white summon who's fat rolling like a champion, I think can safely be classed as one of the saddest moments on this countdown. Moment of silence. Next up is Dark Blood Souls and we're showing some love to the low level fighters, an often underappreciated area of PvP in the Souls games. Low level invasions can sometimes be overlooked because they're more sloppy, unconventional and desperate, but as they say, I think there's beauty in the struggle. So we've got one of those battles here, a raw 3 vs 1 in the crucifixion woods, with the invader of course being at a huge disadvantage. They're very aggressive towards him and one of his opponents is a sorcerer who keeps casting spells which is horrible to deal with as a solo player. Every time you try and counterattack the people charging you down, a barrage of spells will keep you on your toes. The host keeps charging him down and that sorcerer keeps pinging him from a distance. Nightmare situation. Now this invader knows he has a chance to retaliate with some big damage. He's come prepared with some gold pine bundles but it's just a matter of being allowed a chance. That is the challenge. A very delicate 3v1 that was handled very well with a brutal finish. He searched for an opening and he found it. That's the resilience we like to see. This invasion with Swift in the Grand Archives is an absolute mystery. Swift just cannot find his opponents anywhere, he searches up the lift, outside to the rooftops and back inside again. It is not looking promising. By this point, I think most of us would recognise the chances are it's probably a host hiding, using the white branch to camouflage as an object or something, and Swift has the same idea, and chameleons himself up as well. The enemies are dead in this area, so his enemies could be potentially close by.
This invasion was just hilarious. I know a lot of you are really good at noticing the small details, but I literally didn't see them hiding in plain sight until the invader did. But honestly, wasn't it like a horror film when he walked backwards in shock straight into that waiting host? Where did he even come from? That was a successful bamboozle if I ever saw one. Robert is running through Lotharic Castle on New Game Plus 5, hence why he's rolling with the Crow Quills and Millwood Great Bow is quite high level. Both weapons found very late game in the Ashes of Ariandel DLC, so there's no pressure, just slowly clearing out the enemies, taking his time, having fun with it. But suddenly the peaceful scene is interrupted by a visitor. How unlucky do you have to be to invade into an exploding Millwood arrow? That's ridiculous, but hilarious at the same time. Tell you what the icing on the cake is though, about 20 seconds after that invader perished, a friendly Dark Moon comes in to save the day. Right on time, as always. Gotta love the Dark Moon police. This poor fellow drops in, throws a couple of fireballs, and is then promptly sent home again, all in the day's work. At number 10, we're moving down into the poisonous dark depths of the Black Gulch in Dark Souls 2. Rez dies IX invades a group of three, two summons and a host. Now invasions in the Gulch are unique. If you've never tried it, you won't know, but it's a different experience trying to end your opponents while dodging the poison spitting statues and flaming fire pools. The environment in this cave hurts invaders as well, and it's crazy. With all that to contend with, he gets poisoned and effectively put on a timer. Avoid the summons and kill the host before you take your final breath. At number 9 we have a soul level 35 invasion in Dark Souls 3, starting with a one-on-one -on -one duel against a white summon while a very over-leveled Havel watches from the sidelines, and the host is nowhere in sight. And the match ends about a minute in, a decent fight, quite a close one, then he heals up and it's time for the Havel, who did the honourable thing and waited for them to finish. Sometimes the odds just aren't in your favour though, and this is one of those times. A savage combo with the ringed knight paired greatswords rips away about 70% of his health, and the Havel now realises he's essentially won the fight. And then Daniel submits and offers him a Siegbrow, the consumable item that Siegward of Katarina offers to you as a toast to friendship in the Undead Settlement. The Havel, fortunately, is clearly a very respectful player. He accepts the drink and has a little gift of his own. A free host, all on his own and completely AFK. I love this story. It ends with the invader making friends with the protecting summon who in turn betrays his host. Only in Dark Souls. Invading into Dark Souls 2, the Dragon Shrine, we find a 3v1 situation, a host with two friendly summons approach him from below. This invasion is incredible, because usually when you're against multiple people, the only option you have is to hit and run. You know, you have to keep moving around the level while taking any opportunities you get. But this guy is a monster who can't wait to get his hands on them, and his first target ends up being the Golden Sun Bro. was clinical, Gold Phantom taken out with 3 hits and a backstab. His attention is then divided between the remaining two, and you'll notice that Dark Souls 2 is much slower and more methodical than the other games. You really need to manage spacing and stamina in these fights. In some ways, you're punished a lot more for sloppy play. Another difference you'll see is the possibility of guard breaking, which is a new move that replaced kicking, exactly what you want for slapping away giant shields. The White Summon joins his friend as defeated, but from out of nowhere, a second Gold Phantom who was summoned earlier in the fight makes an appearance and they both pressure him up the stairs into the smaller area. Once again, this invader proves he is lethal with throwing knives, remaining very calm and precise, even with a tiny health bar. I've got to give respect to his preparation and build plan as well. He's managed to fit in some miracle healing, which he has plenty of time to cast, 
while chasing down the now fleeing host. And finally, all the way back at the start, we have the showdown. The host is unable to summon any more friends in time, and so we have the classic one versus one. If he wins this, he's just defeated four other players in one invasion. A massive achievement. As a funny bonus to the submission, he's attached a later clip where he actually ends up invading the exact same player again with his squad of summons. They end up being so intimidated that they run straight on by, not interested in any more humiliation. Number 7. Oh, this is a weird one. To briefly go over the context, Sky King has invaded a host who is purposely waiting for invaders. The host is staying around the Grand Cathedral bonfire at the invaders spawning point within the Ivory King DLC. And he's got a very, very specific setup that if you're not prepared to fight against, it turns out to be very challenging. He has the Jester's Robe Top, which means he's immune from backstabs, very powerful item. And additionally, he's rocking some unusual pyromancies. He's got Warmth for constant healing, Firestorm to take control of the Warmth and push everyone away if they get too close. But crucially, he's using Acid Surge, the acid cloud that eats away at your weapons, rings and armor, breaking them to pieces. A pyromancy that is definitely frowned upon in certain circles as being dishonorable. But the fact that he can't be backstabbed means you can't easily interrupt his casting and he's constantly healing from the warmth so he's not easy to just quickly kill either. And long story short, Sky King actually black crystals out and reformulates his build. Now I think this is quite cool because I never really change around my build in between invasions but Sky King's plan is to directly counter that host strategy. So he returns to invade again and immediately the host is there at the spawn point, casting his destructive spells, but this time it's different. He removes his armor and uses a longer weapon, which he doesn't mind getting broken. This turns out to be the crucial change that finally forces the host to actually fight him. So the host switches things, he casts warmth in the tight spot in the center of the room and uses a long weapon with a spinning attack to take control of that space. He definitely has a less precise strategy and more of a let's just push out a load of damage 360 degrees around me and hope for the best. That was actually a very long battle which I cut down. A lot of mind games, but I was really just intrigued by the host's unusual strategy and the smart way in which Sky King worked around it. The Whammy is in the Pontiff Cathedral in a chaotic 3 vs 2 on high level builds with weapon buffs out, pyromancy being thrown around, but that doesn't stop him from making some phenomenal plays. And the White Summon is the first one to go down with a counter parry into a strength weapon menu swap and he's going to carry on this momentum into a menu swap type that I personally have never seen before. I guess since it exists, a lot of you will have known about it, but it's just something I hadn't thought of before. But those were mid-air jumping weapon swaps for that little bit of extra efficiency and damage. And it's finished off well as the host pulls the plug and rage quits. Dropping Lucy is playing a bit of Dark Souls 2. Facing the Iron Keep Bridge, there are four enemies, a host with three heirs of the sun by his side. Luckily, he's been training his whole life for this moment. That was a dirty triple kill, leaving the final Sunbro absolutely speechless, the host and his two Sunbros absolutely obliterated by Lingering Flame, a pyromancy that leaves a floating fireball in the air which acts as a landmine, exploding when enemies get near. What an absolutely incredible moment. At number 4, we have a Dark Souls 1 submission by Comreed. A full giant dad cosplay, backflip, triple kill, down a ladder. What a madman! I know this guy's recently passed a thousand subscribers as well, and the first a thousand are usually the hardest to get, so congrats to you man, that was awesome.
Up for number three is Gisto222, and if the tales be true, he's one of the most feared pyromancers in all the lands. Not one, but two true pyromancy combos, taking out his opponents with a build that's set up for extreme damage output, but also with great spell choices like Fire Surge for roll catching and Chaos Bed Vestiges for the initial surprise attack. This one was very eye opening in showing how viable a pure pyromancer actually can be. These last few places were very, very hard to choose between. But here we have Linkberg, who's invaded two other players, and boy, do I feel sorry for them. Number one, this is one hell of an invasion, so buckle in boys. Adam Barker invades in Arch Dragon Peak, encountering a host with a Dark Moon backing him up and a somewhat dodgy internet connection, which is the absolute worst thing to have when you're outnumbered. It's very easy to be overwhelmed by laggy phantom range attack spam and just give up. This connection seems funky to me for some reason. He's wielding the Man Serpent Hatchet, a very fitting weapon for this location, and not one you see particularly often. Oh. There's a lot to take in in this one. He tries a few mm. different strategies, including trying to get the enemies positioned around the level to lend a hand. Always a strategy that an invader mm. should be thinking about. There we go, all right. It was coming, you get chip damage, then you get the repost, he's dead, he's dead. Stop! Oh my God. Oh my ass. <sighs> Super frustrating. Holy shit, blues! Unbelievable. I mean, this admission deserves to be here for the amount of blues alone. A second Dark Moon invades the world alongside a blue sentinel from the Way of Blue Whoa. Covenant. Oh my god, this guy didn't... Double blues? Like, instantly. That is crazy. Peace. So after taking on the initial 2v1 challenge and killing the Dark Moon, the situation simply escalates to a 3v1. It's gotten worse, and so has the connection. Holy ass, come on. This is brutal, man. Whoa! Alright, this is your warning. Coming up, we have the most butt-clenching moment on this countdown. Prepare yourself. Still in the game, boys. Still in the game. He ended up trapped for what seemed like forever with his three opponents blocking him in, spamming everything they had, and yet he made it out alive. The amount of close shaves and narrow escapes in this submission makes it such an exciting one to watch. It seems like the host has even seeded the world, so the level enemies are now hostile to Adam. He has no friends here. He's completely on his own. you dude you and the ass you rode in on oh oh that feels good man that one felt real good what an ending to a great countdown incredible submissions for this episode i really hope you all enjoyed watching and thank you so much to everyone who sent in their footage I put a huge amount of time into this one, so I'm just hoping it shows. The next topic, for those who are planning to submit, is top 10 hate mails. I know this one is going to get salty, and I usually try to keep things positive, but I think it could be entertaining, and honestly I'm just curious as to what kind of things we'll see. So yeah, let's try it. From all the Souls games, if you find an opponent who gets a little bit upset, send it in and we'll have some fun with it. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next one. See you soon.